Welcome everybody to Nine's Corner. Hi, I'm Nine. It's nice to meet you. And if you're returning, welcome back, my dear friends. You know how much I appreciate you. So somebody had commented in my last video of uh, vibes that I didn't look so happy. So I have tried to start this video over and over and over again, just being happy, Joe, you know, go lucky. And I'm just not. I've had just so many things going on from starting a new job and all that that entails and the learning curve to having trouble with my son at school, dealing with the principal, and it's so much more in between. And then I come to my channel, which is my space of joy, my space of being able to give and receive with people on a spiritual level and being able to share my love of tarot and my channel is just all over the place. And sometimes I just think it's me. People don't enjoy my readings. Uh, I've had people suggest do live readings because you're not part of a group. Or, you know, somebody said, because you're not specifically just one, you know, subject, political readings, because you go off and do all this other stuff, it breaks up your, your algorithm. And I just, I mean, I, I literally made a video to say goodbye to something I love. And a, a dear friend of mine said, Nine, you've gone through so much recently. You should just give yourself a couple of weeks before you make any major decisions. And that really stuck with me. And then I had another friend say, you know, Nine, you need to wake up and make the day about making yourself happy and putting out gratitude and um, give yourself a break. So today I did some meditation, I went for a walk, and all of a sudden I found myself hearing the birds, and it was so beautiful, and I thought, oh, the birds are back. And then I realized, was my head so full of noise that when I went for other walks, I didn't hear them. They were there, but I didn't hear them. I, I took a little video to show you. So I just decided to take my own advice that I give to so many people, you know, to carry on, to feel what feels right for you and to stick to your true self and to give gratitude for everything that you have in this life and to move forward, baby steps. So there it is, guys, but we're going to wash that off. We're going to just, you know what, life is too short to get settled down and and crazy about things that are happening because in a week that's going to be the past and I'll be moved on to something new. So let's get into the reading. Don't you feel, don't you feel as though there's this, this momentum of movement that's happening, especially when we're looking at the end of March and astrologers are just going crazy about the end of March. So I'm really interested in finding out did Jared Kushner actually uh, become an informant for the FBI? I'm really interested in finding out, you know, let's just check in on Donald and Ivanka and family just to see how they're, um, how they're navigating all of this. And, and a famous actor, Robert Blake, recently passed away, but there was a lot of mystery around his life. So I thought we'll do a reading on him at the end of our video. So, so guys, Jared Kushner, we've said for years now that he's definitely, you know, going to take care of himself and make sure everything works out for him. And that he and Ivanka would definitely, you know, throw Trump under the bus. And it looks like we're in it. But it's like, I have this feeling of like, oh, all this stuff is happening. It's so exciting. Get your popcorn. But at the same time, we've been disappointed so many times from hoping something was going to happen and then nothing actually ends up happening or we're just put into this delay. So Jared Kushner, did you? Oh, yeah, he did. The Knight of Wands is all about being at a crossroads in your life and having to kind of figure out where, if you take this path, where will this follow? If you take this path, where does this follow? 
So he's definitely at a crossroads. I think that this is my card of documents, documents that create decisions. So I think that, yes, he's passed over documents. I think that, yes, he's in, he is an informant for the FBI when it comes to Donald Trump. Underneath it all, we have the Ace of Cups. So I think for Kushner, there's a feeling on the one hand, he has the heart where, you know, he's not a good person. He was happy enough to take advantage of anything that he could when he was working within the White House with Donald Trump. So on the one hand, he has these feels about wanting to just get more and more. And it's almost like he's annoyed that they would actually try to go after him. And on the other side, he has the intellect to know that the tower is crumbling and you need to do something. So in the past, we have the fool. Um, the fool is somebody who just goes forth and does it and doesn't think about the consequences. And that's exactly what he did. He worked within the Trump org, knowing that he was making relationships, getting money for his own for his own family, for his own company, for his building on 666 Park Avenue, the whole nine yards. He's so deep in this and he's so naive and so delusional to go forth on it. It's like he was his own worst enemy from the very, very beginning. What's most on top of Jared Kushner's mind? is the Ace of Swords. He is worried about the truth. There is tension. There is pressure. There is, you know, one side, the Trump, Trump org, they're all pushing on him. And on the other side is the FBI saying, help us help you. Help us help you through the documentation that he's given and through navigating for them some of the dealings and deeds that were done by Trump. That's the reality that we're looking at, the outcome. <gasps> Guys, just, just take a look. So this is, for Jared Kushner, the end of a cycle. You were destined to have this cycle happen, and now it's at the end. It's, it's either soon or near the end of completion. This is letting me know that he is the key, one of the one of the keys to Donald Trump's downfall for sure. When the when justice comes up, it's a situation that's going to be weighed and in the future you will see the repercussions of it. So I feel as though even though Jared Kushner is going to be helping and is an informant for the FBI, that justice will still be held against him. So he must be in a really bad way to the point where, yes, he's going to tell on Donald Trump. He's going to tell on some stuff. But at the end of the day, he's still going to face justice himself. That sounds so good. That sounds so good. Let's see how Ivanka's feeling in this moment. Let's see how Ivanka is feeling in this moment. What, what does Ivanka think of the latest development when it comes to Jared Kushner? Is she worried? We all know she's already told on him. Let's see. What's Ivanka thinking? Page of Pentacles. She's aware of the information. She knows of the information. There's definitely a money tie here as well. Um, co communications, letters, um documents this is get this is she is aware and knows completely what Jared Kushner has given to the FBI she may have even assisted which I believe because we've got the ten of pentacles meaning the family were together so I think that Ivanka and Jared just like we've said a hundred thousand times before stuck together know what's on the page and are trying to work to the best of their ability to CYA cover your butt. They are, uh, for her, I think that they're just kind of, they're naive to the situation. I think it took them a long time to realize that, no, this is real. You're going to get in trouble. Donald Trump can't cover you for everything. 
Um, so I think that there's also a case here to be made that they may have these pocket, um, these pocket pardons that are really useless pieces of paper. Um, I don't know why that just came to me, but as soon as I got this, I just had this image. So I'm just going to say it. Um, I think that she too is at a crossroads and she is definitely in line, in pace with her husband. So let's have a look at Monsieur Donald Truck. How, how much, how must he be feeling? Everything is falling apart in his life. Mike Pence, too little, too late, you know, oh God, it drives me nuts, that man. But has come out and said, you know, Donald Trump was wrong. He shouldn't have tried to overturn the election. That he put his, his wife and his family in danger. But why didn't he say all this when it actually happened back on January 6th? Because the man has no spine. That's why. So let's see how Trump is feeling. He's not doing well. All the, it seems like all the... All the different investigations are all just showing signs of just waiting like dominoes to fall. So let's see how how Donald's feeling. Because you can almost feel that like, yeah, yeah, he knows everything's going on, but he's still the clown. You know what I mean? Yes, I drop my cards. It happens every time. Let's just ignore it and move on. Ooh. Ooh. He's feeling judgment. Oh, this is wicked for him. He's feeling judged by his family. He's feeling outed by his kids. He feels like, I did all this for you. He's like Cody on Sister Wives. Like, everything I did, everything I gave, I sacrificed, da 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 da, -da. And everybody's just looking at him. You're a fool. You're a fool. The emperor has no clothes on. <laughs> So he is really worried about judgment. He's really feeling that all the support systems, whether they were family, friends, or, you know, people that had worked, in, worked with him for a long time, he's seeing everybody turn and he is, he is holding his breath, waiting for the shoe to fall. Wow. Looks good on you, Trump. It looks good on you. So let's look for our last reading about Robert Blake. Actor Robert Blake passed away on March 9th, 2023. Unfortunately, he is more well known for being accused and later acquitted of the murder of his wife, Bonnie Lee Bakley. She was just 44 years old. Together, they had a daughter, Rose, whose paternity was put into question. The other father possibility was Christian Brando. The child was Blake's and Bonnie's, and they went on to have a short-lived, unhappy marriage. At the time of her death, they were at a restaurant together. Robert Blake was in the car with her as they were about to leave. He went back into the restaurant because he said he forgot his gun there. At that time, while he was in the restaurant, his wife was shot multiple times. Robert was arrested. While two former stunt doubles who had said they were asked to kill his wife were heard by the jury, they were not believed as they were known drug users. The jury also could not prove that Blake had held the gun. Later, after the acquittal, Blake was, was found liable in a civil case for intentionally causing Blakely's death. He was ordered to pay $30 million, later cut to 50, $15 million. He always maintained his innocence. So let's have a look at that suspicious situation did he or did he did he or did he not kill his wife if he didn't pull the trigger was he the one that actually set up the sting to kill his wife and will we ever find out about it like let's just look at the energies as they lie and see what's the truth around that situation let's find out what the truth is around that situation robert blake what happened when you went in to get your gun from the, re from the restaurant? Page of Swords, did he set her up 100%? This is somebody who has um, an agenda on their mind and they're set out to do it and they don't have the maturity to make a different decision. This is him. 
Five of Cups, uh, he was very offended by this particular person. I feel like he felt like he had lost something due to her. And it's more than just what the story that we have. There's something else that happened around that time where he felt a loss. And he filled it up by being with her and then felt stuck by it. You know, he had a child, which he said wasn't his and ended up being his. And it's, you know, it, it's a full story there. There's drama there to be had. Eight of Cups. Wow. He wanted to get out of there. He was willing to put everything, including his life, everything, his career, everything that he had built up. He was willing to walk away because he was finished with her. He had no one to do anything with him, with her. On top of it, we got the Nine of Pentacles. He truly felt that if he could get her off his back, that he would find happiness. I think there's almost a feeling of this mental issue because, right, you know, when you're looking at the sword, you're looking at mental thoughts and feelings. So when looking at the cards together, you can see there's a mental component to this that he really became paranoid and really lost his way. Underneath it all... There's the Knight of Pentacles, which I think really shows that he may not have been the one that actually shot the gun, possibly, um, because I do get the feeling like it's it, it could be possible that he actually, you know, held the gun or at some other time had previously, you know, had that urge to want to do something of his own fruition. Uh, but with the Knight of Pentacles here, I think that there's definitely a payment here that was made to get rid of her. Um, he spoke his innocence the whole time. There was no way, no way was he going to say anything different for the rest of his life. There's no way he was willing to do anything different. He knows that he paid for and got that done. And for the rest of his life, he there was there was money or additional money that was paid out. There was additional things that they had to try to cover up and bury that if somebody really just kind of picked a little bit into the case, they would find. Um, I really believe that there was definitely a mental issue here. He got paranoid. He could not see. He was emotionally just so stunted. And there was a, there's, you know, when somebody does wrong, but they blame somebody else and they truly, truly believe it. He truly believes that him getting off was the right thing because he truly believed it deep inside of him. But this was a small win because he had to live with the reality of, reality of that situation and being asked about that situation for the rest of his life. He had to go around the rest of his life defending himself. I'm I'm so pleased to see this card because the star tells me that in death, he was freed. In death, he learned about, he did a life review. He learned about what was going on, what was his purpose, what was his destiny, the lessons he learned and took from people and the lessons he was able to give to people. And it's all love. It's all pure love. Everything goes back into this pure, perfect existence. And so did Robert Blake. So God bless him. You know, the situation on earth was horrific. And yes, you know, we could see from the cards what happened. But at the end of his life, regardless of his personality that he had on earth and his body that he wore on earth and all those earthly bound things that we have, no matter who you are, what you do, when you go into a better place, it is pure love. Pure love, pure understanding, pure acceptance. And there's such a great knowledge here, so much more. If you looked at a pie and said, Nina or you know one quarter of it, well, there's three quarters of it that we're not aware of, the purposes and the people that play a role in our lives and the complete destiny of some people to, to finish a cycle that affects many. So... Very interesting read. Very interesting. I enjoyed that. And I so thank you for being here with me. I really enjoyed our time. It was joyful. And uh, please feel free to like, share, subscribe, and do all those good things that help my channel. 
And as always, and as forever, we have our unity candle lit for each and every one of us. And until the next time we chat, cheerio and take care of my friends.